Hi guys, it is a chilly, gloomy, smoky day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is a, it is now a Wednesday evening, June, June 28th, feels more like, I don't know, March, uh, where we never passed 65 degrees, that's Fahrenheit for... <laughs> Just to make sure you understand, 65 degrees Fahrenheit here uh, in Paradise in the Finger Lakes of New York on June 28th, while all the other, while so much of the planet, the country and the planet suffering in the triple digits. Uh, we're sitting here not seeing 70 degrees on the coldest spring that I have ever had in my entire life so far 2023 but we did we we do have some triple digits it's not like we are we have no triple digits it is now the air quality index is presently sitting at 122 what are they calling this? An air quality index of 122. I'm going to put this little dog, give him his own chair. A little smoky dog. A little smoky dog. It is officially, they're calling it unhealthy for sensitive groups. Are you a sensitive group, little dog? So it is now unhealthy for sensitive groups. Fortunately, I am an insensitive doomer. So, uh, speaking of doomers, uh, you know, I've always been a little bit conflicted about this fellow Richard Heinberg. Richard Heinberg on one level as one of my heroes, but I've always expected that he's a little bit of a closet apocaloptimist. Uh, no one on this planet knows any better than Richard Heinberg how completely sorry uh, that this planet is. Uh, yet he's not quite ready to Put on the t-shirt even with this uh, <laughs> you know even with this Richard Heinberg uh, is not quite ready to throw in the doomer towel and say get out there and enjoy anything you can while you still can so anyway we have actually uh, Richard Heinberg uh, has recently finished uh, with some co-authors, Asher Miller, and anyways, Richard Heinberg and the gang from the Post Carbon Institute have come up with this uh, report, and, and I'm fully, full disclosure, I have not read the report yet. I've just read these two uh, encapsulations of it. But their new report, and if you, there's a link, and you can get the free download. Uh, so if you want to just completely soak up the entire apocalyptic report, uh, you, you can do it and tell me what I missed. <clears throat> and this is called Welcome to the Great Unraveling. Navigating the Poly Crisis of Environmental and Social Breakdown. Uh, so it sounds like, by this title, that we are going to have a poly crisis of environmental and social breakdown, but we're going to be able to navigate it. Uh, so it sounds a little bit like the definition of apocaloptimism to me, someone who realizes, totally understands 
that we're that we're doomed on, on every level that we are heading into a poly crisis of environmental and social breakdown that we're just going to be able to navigate it the great unraveling i think uh deb ozarko doomer chick from canada when she spoke to me deb ozarko no longer speaks to me uh, even though uh, she and I agreed on Corona Panic, even, even though we completely agreed on Corona Panic, uh, I, I think Deb is never speaking to me again because I agree with her on Corona Panic. Anyway, don't know what happened to Deb Ozarko. Deb, if you're listening to this, uh, give me a call, girl. But anyway, we're not here to talk about Deb Ozarko. We're here to talk about Richard Heinberg. Uh, Deb Ozarko is not an apocaloptimist, but she calls the 2020s the decade of the great unraveling. So maybe uh, Richard Heinberg got the uh, idea for this from my interview with Deb. So uh, this is what, so we're going to read two short things uh, from Richard. This is from June 15th. He wrote this in the Post Carbon Institute. <clears throat> in recent years, policy think tanks have increasingly adopted the term polycrisis to signify humanity's destabilized status quo. Welcome to the great unraveling Navigating the poly crisis of environmental and social breakdown seeks to build a coherent narrative about the roots of the poly crisis, the signs of its arrival and evolution, and why we should be thinking differently about the future. During the 20th century, and especially the latter half of that century, humanity's increasing adoption of fossil fuels as sources of cheap and abundant energy enabled rapid industrialization. The result was a massive increase in nearly all human activities and their ecological and social impacts a process that has been called the Great Acceleration. The first two decades of, 21st, of the 21st century saw a new phase of the Great Acceleration with wars fought over the last sources of cheap oil, expensive and destructive exploitation of remaining natural resources, the massive use of debt and speculation to expand energy production and maintain economic growth, and the arrival of environmental and social impacts too overwhelming for even the world's wealthiest and most powerful people and nations to ignore. Uh, again, I don't know... You know, and I'm, I'm really not here to debate uh, Richard Heinberg. I'm quite sure I would lose. But if, if, if I were debating Richard Heinberg, I, I would probably be saying, uh, or just talking to him uh, at a party, uh, I, I would say, dude, I, I see absolutely zero evidence of anything you just said in that... Uh, uh, last sentence. Uh, huh. Anyway, I see no evidence that the world's wealthiest and most powerful people and nations are not ignoring the biggest story. And it, 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 I'm, I would say 99% of the poor people uh, it makes no difference uh, how rich or poor you are. Uh, my guess is it's a pretty even across the board. 99% of people, including, what is it, the 80 million people breathing in this wildfire smoke 
today, completely ignoring uh, the great, whether it's the acceleration or the uh, deceleration. Anyway, back to Richard. Now, in the 2020s, the great acceleration is losing steam and shows signs of reversing direction. Okay, uh, I, 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 again, uh, I, I just have to, as much as I respect Richard Heinberg, and would love to interview the man someday, uh, you know, I keep going back to my interview with Tim Garrett, and now apparently, uh, 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 oh boy, I'm having a, 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 a Reese, William Reese, uh, even piling on what uh, Tim Garrett is saying, that between now and 2050, that this planet is going to use as much of this planet's resources. Uh, Tim Garrett was saying in my interview with him, since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, since 1750, that humanity is, is, is moving into such overdrive, uh, going completely off the charts, that we're going to, uh, well, attempt to you know, double the amount of planet that we've eaten since 1750. And as in this uh, thing I was reading from uh, William Reese recently was claiming that the human species is set to double the amount of, you know, use again the amount of uh, this planet that we have eaten in the last 300,000 years that uh, I, I see no sign of the great acceleration reversing course. Now, as Tim Garrett said flat out, and William Reese, uh, I'm sure, would, would second this motion, it ain't going to happen. There is going to be a great unraveling the question is, is it going to be a slow unraveling, or is it going to be what uh, Ugo Barty calls the Seneca Cliff, that we're going to accelerate, accelerate, accelerate. We're going to keep our, our foot solidly pedal to the metal on the, on the gas pedal until we slam into a brick wall uh, at 8 billion uh, miles per hour. Uh, that is the only question. There is going to be a deceleration and an unraveling sometime in the next 30 years. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, but it ain't going to be voluntary. There's going to be nothing voluntary about it. Humanity is going to do every single thing we can to ignore this, to deny it, to crucify anybody who acts like uh, it, it, it's going to happen. Anyway, I thought this was supposed to be a rant about Richard Heinberg. And, and uh, anyway, let's get back to Richard. I think you know how I feel. Uh, let's see how, how Richard feels. Let me wipe the smoke off my glasses. Where was I? Getting back to, uh, getting back to Richard. According to Richard Heinberg, uh, now in the 2020s, the great acceleration is losing steam and shows signs of reversing direction. Fault leaders and policy think tanks have invented a new word, polycrisis. Poly wants a crisis. Polycrisis to refer to the tangles of global environmental and social dilemmas that are accumulating, mutually interacting, and worsening. 
the central claim of this report, you know, their new report, is that the polycrisis is evidence that humanity is entering what some have called the great unraveling, a time of consequences in which individual impacts are compounding to threaten the very environmental and social systems that support modern human civilization. And I agree with that uh, statement 100%. The great unraveling challenges us, meaning I guess the one one hundredth of one percent of the planet reading the report, and even I am not reading the report, uh, because uh, I already uh, understand it, I guess. The great unraveling challenges us to grapple with the prospect of a far more difficult future, one of mutually exacerbating crises, some acute, others chronic, interacting across environmental and social systems in complex ways, at different rates, in many places, and with different results. Well, up into the last two words, I would, uh, I have no problem with any of this. Uh, the, the end result is the only result that matters. Welcome to the Great Unraveling is intended to help the general public who will never even hear of the report, much less read it, but particularly academics and researchers, environmental and social justice non-governmental organizations and their funders and the media recognize what the great unraveling is, what it means for both human civilization and the global ecosystem, and what we can do in response. The paper calls attention to four main things. Number one, the alarming, rapidly changing environmental and social conditions of the Great Unraveling. Number two, the need to grapple with complexity, uncertainty, and conflicting prioritized hallmarks of the Great Unraveling. Number three, the need to maintain social cohesion within societies and peaceful relations between them during the great unraveling. And this is where I start to decouple with uh, Richard Heinberg. Yes, uh, the, the need to maintain social cohesion within societies and peaceful relations between them during the great unraveling. I think we need to look no farther than the corona panic, okay, to see the chance of that happening. Uh, while implementing key changes in collective behavior and managing the negative consequences of past fail failures to act, uh, yes, and number four, the personal competencies, the personal competencies that are needed to understand what is happening during the Great Unraveling and to respond constructively, primarily by building household and community resilience for this precarious time. I guess what he's talking about is pooping in a five-gallon bucket. I think he's talking about human urine. Is you, you know once the public sewers uh, fail and and then uh, rural septic systems. I think what he means by uh, household community resilience uh, for this precarious time is to learn how to take a shit in a five-gallon bucket without getting too grossed out 
And if you come to Bugs in a Jar Farm, I can teach you how to do that. But anyway, so that was on uh, June 15th. And then I guess uh, he went from that to writing an article for resilience.org, which has been reprinted in Common Dreams in the little lefty greeny uh, website, Common Dreams. And they have titled this article, which uh, Richard wrote on June 22nd, Coming Soon to a Planet Near You, Polycrisis, Unraveling, Simplification, or Collapse. Well, the name of this channel is Collapse Chronicles. I think we all know the option that I am putting uh, my dwindling money on before I dive into this article. Let me make sure the camera has not collapsed. Okay, and the camera says it is still running. Okay, so what is on Richard Heimberg's mind? So a lot of this is going to repeat what I just said. All right. Since the start of the corona panic, Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the resulting disruption of multiple global supply chains, policy think tanks have increasingly adopted the word polycrisis to signify humanity's destabilized status quo. The World Economic Forum's which I went over, uh, we, we had a rant, the World Economic Forum's 2023 Global Risk Report, which she has a link to, uses the newish word 13 times in its 90 pages. Scholars from a range of disciplines have written about the polycrisis, and both Cascade Institute and Omega Institute have published papers and reports on it, and he has links to those two reports, which I need to read. The Cascade Institute report, again, which maybe I'll come back in a future rant with this, notes that, quote, a global polycrisis occurs when crises, plural, and multiple global systems become causally entangled in ways that significantly degrade humanity's prospects. These interacting crises produce harms greater than the sum of those crises would produce in isolation were their host systems not so deeply interconnected, close quote. And I've had this rant before about, you know, the, this um, specious, spurious debate about whether it's ecological collapse, social collapse, economic collapse. There is no way to disentangle this, uh, you know, ball of wax here. Uh, it, it's they all feed each other. The entire process is speeding up everywhere. Uh, and again, will it uh, be a deceleration or a Seneca cliff? Uh, evidence of polycrisis, this is back to Richard, evidence of polycrisis is usually separated into two buckets, environmental and social. Well, he didn't mention economic. I guess that's part of social. Signs of environmental crisis include climate change, the disappearance of wild nature, relentless resource depletion, the increasing chemical pollution of air and water, soil loss and degradation, and freshwater scarcity. 
evidence of social crisis includes increasing economic inequality, poverty, racism, and other forms of discrimination, the rise of authoritarianism, and impacts of rapid technological change such as automation. Our current set of crises, plural, can be described as a polycrisis because self force because self reinforcing feedbacks between ecological breakdown and social breakdown are strengthening and growing more numerous. Sounds like the great acceleration is in full swing, uh, according to Richard so far. For example, climate-driven human migration presents challenges to political systems while also eroding traditional cultural norms that support environmental stewardship. Don't get me going on the myth of the noble savage. Societies in the midst of social crisis and ones turning toward authoritarian regimes, can you say Donald Trump, are seldom able, they're seldom able because they don't give a damn, uh, to muster efforts toward resource conservation, emissions reduction, and habitat preservation. Indeed, under such circumstances, past efforts in these directions may be undermined, which is exactly what you're seeing with the uh, Joe Biden administration. You saw it with Donald Trump. Uh, you know, just on, on a full-scale war against any sort of environmental protection. You saw it with Donald Trump. You saw it with uh, Bozo Nero down there in Brazil. And uh, you're seeing it with Joe Biden. It's just a little more hidden. <clears throat> okay. All of this, all of this which sounds to me like great acceleration is happening in the wake of a couple decades worth of historical studies that show societal collapse to be a normal, predictable, and even inescapable periodic occurrence throughout the past few thousand years. That is exactly what it is. That's why I, it's not that hard to run a, a, a YouTube channel called Collapse Chronicles. Uh, societal collapse is a normal, predictable, and inescapable occurrence. Uh, it, it has been throughout the past few thousand years, and of course the big difference and let's say it, class, is this time, for the first time in human history, we have now gone global, so the whole global society is coming down. This is, this is uh, totally apparent to me, and it sounds like it's apparent to Richard Heinberg. So far, he's a doomer. It appears, it appears, hmm, that societies tend to become more complex, develop new technologies, accumulate wealth, and grow more unequal over time. Their leaders start to quarrel with each other, weakening overall social cohesion. Finally, after two or three centuries of this, almost anything can push a society over the brink a natural disaster, resource depletion, war, insurrection, epidemic, or financial crash. Scholars who engage with the accumulating literature 
on societal collapse can hardly help noting the relevance for today's world. We have built a global civilization of unparalleled complexity, wealth, and inequality, all based on depleting, polluting fossil fuels. What could go wrong? So far, uh, good old Richard Heimberg is full doomer. An early warning came in 1972 with the publication of the Limits to Growth, a report by MIT Systems Dynamic Scientists on their efforts to model the likely future interactions between population growth, consumption growth, and resource depletion. Their computer-based scenario suggested under business-as-usual conditions, global industrial society would likely collapse during the middle decades of the 21st century. And I have not seen one iota of evidence that tells me that they were wrong. Uh, every uh, indication I see is that uh, is that they is they were right, uh, and uh, you know Tim Garrett and William Reese and uh, anybody who does not suffer from hopium soaked apocalyptimism uh, would, would agree that this is predictable and inescapable at this point. Uh, all right, so uh, now <coughs> the hopium begins to sneak in to the doomer. So this is Richard Heimberg firing up his hopium pipe. A new report by the Post Carbon Institute titled Welcome to the Great Unraveling, Navigating the Polycrisis of environmental and social breakdown. Full disclosure, I am one of its authors, seeks to build a coherent narrative about the roots of the polycrisis, the signs of its arrival and evolution, and why we should be thinking differently about the future. When confronted with evidence, that our collective path is unsustainable, many of us tend to jump to all-or-nothing ways of thinking, sometimes framing our future in simplistic terms as, quote, the end of the world or apocalypse. I would add... Uh, when confronted with evidence uh, that, that anyone who is honest with themselves and has the most fundamental grasp of discernment and critical thinking looking at uh, the, the evidence on the table, the growing pile of evidence on the table, uh, would frame our future uh, in simplistic terms as the end of the world or apocalypse. But, according to the report's authors, you know, including Richard, this tendency is unhelpful. While a complete and sudden end of humanity is theoretically possible via nuclear war, our more likely future will consist of decades of social, economic, political, and ecological turmoil punctuated by periods of rescue and recovery. There is still considerable difference between best and worst case scenarios and we still have agency to affect outcomes. Yes. 
the uh, the doomer is thrown in the towel and uh, you notice a very subtle doomer bashing going on here uh, this is so everything up into this paragraph Richard Heinberg sounding just like the doomer we all know and love and now even Richard Heinberg very you know, very carefully and diplomatically trash-talking doomers. What is his word? That doomers... What are we? Unhelpful. Uh, anybody putting on the t-shirt is being unhelpful. It is unhelpful to say, get out there and enjoy it while you still can because this shit show is coming down. That is unhelpful. Richard Heinberg, um, Michael Mann, whoever doesn't want to hear it any more than your mother wants to hear it. Okay. According to the PCI report, we should, we should be spending far less effort building expectations of a future that looks much like today only with more technology mobility and wealth instead we should devote our collective brain power to questions like how does a civilization downsize gracefully or what have we achieved that our distant descendants would like us to preserve for them. They want us to preserve uh, SUVs and smartphones and internet porno and uh, 44 ounce big gulps and uh, virtual reality glasses. This is what our distant descendants want us to preserve for them. And um, how does a civilization downsize gracefully? A civilization does not downsize gracefully. It doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. Ain't gonna happen. There's going to be nothing graceful about the downsizing. Make no mistake about this. Nothing graceful about it and and all of this what we need to do what we should be doing all of this apocalyptic crap no shit sherlock we all know what we need to be doing and nobody's doing it okay <sighs> maybe we'd be better off avoiding the word collapse altogether since it tends to be disempowering. Nate Hagens, who interviews polycrisis experts on his podcast, terms the era we are entering the great simplification. What do you think, guys? Instead of collapse chronicles, uh, we're going to call it the great simplification slippage report. Well, I'm going to change the name of this channel from Collapse Chronicles. Yes, maybe we'd be better off avoiding the word collapse altogether because nobody wants to hear it. Richard Heinberg doesn't want to hear it. Okay? You know, when Richard Heinberg, Richard Heinberg does not want to to hear the word collapse. He wants to get collapse out of the dictionary. I'm, I'm, I'm really getting embarrassed for Richard Heinberg. How old is Richard? I guess a little older than me. Uh, anyway, we won't make any... Uh, okay, won't go there. Anyway, regardless of what we call it, I call it the Morano scene. Regardless of what we call it, this will be a time that calls for new attitudes and behaviors. Okay, I agree with that. It, it is a time that calls for new attitudes and behaviors, but nobody is going to answer the call, Richard. Put 
the hopium pipe away, brother. You're starting to sound like, uh, anyway, I won't go there. Strategies that seemed to make sense before the polycrisis, such as efforts to grow national economies, will need to be replaced by different ones, such as efforts to build resilience. I'm sure all of the Cretans at the MAGA, uh, you know, the Donald Trump MAGA uh, little cult uh, meetings would agree with that. Fortifying resilience at the community level will be especially important as global supply chains grow brittle and shatter. Humanity will depend more upon local economies for survival and opportunities to thrive. Cooperative strategies to ration scarce resources. <laughs> oh, God. We're losing you, Richard. You're going around the bend, brother. Cooperative strategies to ration scarce resources and reduce inequality will also be required so as to defuse conflict and ensure optimal outcomes for as many as possible. It, if anybody wants to see an example of cooperative strategies to ration scarce resources, there's this um, this thing documentary series on Netflix called Chimpanzee Empire. Okay, I anybody wanting to know what cooperative strategies to ration scarce resources is going to look like? What I, uh, you know, I want you to look at what was the, the chimp's name, something like Powder Puff, who was ripped to pieces by a rival gang of chimpanzees. I think they were fighting over a fruit tree, these, these warring bands of chimpanzees uh, killing each other over... Uh, over a fig tree. Well, huh? I think a, I think we've been killing each other over a fig tree for at least two thousand years. Anyway, chimpanzee empire. For anybody, I I, I want to recommend to Richard Heinberg. He watched Ch chimpanzee empire. If humanity descends into blame and desperate efforts to maintain a status quo that by its very nature cannot persist. The future looks dark indeed. Imagine what a young person a few decades from now living in a depleted and ravaged world might feel while looking at surviving images of today's influencers enjoying comfort, convenience, and privilege on an epic scale. However, if we work together now to build a truly sustainable way of life, maybe, maybe future generations will have at least some reasons to thank us. <laughs> Well, there's a lot put in that last sentence. Number one, assuming there will be any future generations, I can imagine what they're going to thank us for. Anyway, I'm probably talking to myself because I think my battery flipped off. But anyway, uh, get out there and start thinking of things to do to for the future generations to thank you for while you still can. I'm going to go uh, get back to the smoky skies of the collapse. 
Oh boy, yep, there you go. This is, <laughs> I am so glad I moved to upstate New York to get away from wildfire smoke. Bye guys.